Today I'm just going to show you a few things um, about building reactive apps with Realm. And this is the very first time that I'm speaking about this. So if you have feelings about my talk afterwards, do share with me what do you think, or if anything was good or bad and, and stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah, it's a talk about reactive with Realm specifically, not a given framework like Rx or Rack, but just building reactive applications with Realm. And so I work for Realm uh, and Realm is a, we call it a mobile database because we didn't really find a proper name yet for it. Um, <coughs> but it actually does a lot of other things uh, as you will see in this, in this talk. Uh, and it's cross-platform, so we have Android and iOS, and now we have also React Native, which is great. And it's a very modern, it's uh, developed on GitHub, so people open issues and PRs and things like that, and it's free. And before you ask me, how do you make my money if it's free? Then yeah, we have corporate clients, we do support and things like this for them, so uh, that it can be free for everyone else. Uh, and it's working out pretty, pretty great so far, okay. But yeah, reactive. So reactive is super, super modern right now, I guess. With and hip, but if you do reactive, you're not a hipster. Just hip, yeah. And so, and so I, I, for the lack of other reference, um, I would just put in the four, uh, the four pillars of reactive uh, that are found in the reactive manifesto which are that reactive applications are responsive, resilient, elastic, and message-driven. And I've seen a lot of people on the internet being super pissed about this. This means nothing. This is like every software is like that. And I tend to agree, like, yes, every good software is like that. <laughs> uh, so what's the difference then between doing reactive and, 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 and non-reactive? Well, if you follow closely these, then yes, you have a reactive application and you can do it in many different ways, right? So we've been doing reactive applications for a long time, actually. Applications that are resilient and that are message driven and so forth. And so a reactive, like a simple mobile application that is reactive might look something like this. You will have a network controller that maybe fetches JSON from the internet and then works on a separate thread saves all the data to some kind of storage and then sends a notification via the NS notification center. And then the view controller will receive this and then they will know to pull the new data from the storage and so forth. So we actually did have this already. Um, I, don't, I don't say that we didn't have this. But uh, you know, the reactive frameworks make it just a little bit easier to do this and maybe safer and maybe less crashes uh, and maybe faster to write. Um, so I think it's pretty good to, to use a framework for it. And so what is Realm super reactive? Uh, well, first of all, it's super fast, which is great if you, if you need to manage a lot of threads that are talking to each other uh, or if you, have, if you wanna have a responsive UI, things like that, it's really important that, that you're super fast. Um, if you don't stop me, I'm gonna talk about Realm the whole time. So maybe we just rush through this and then we have a look at the code. <laughs> uh, but so it's straight safe, yeah. Threads are talking to each other pretty good uh, via Realm. And there's, I think the best thing that actually fits the reactive architecture is that with Realm, you always read the latest data. You never have data that is outdated because Realm doesn't really copy data from your disk to your memory. It actually works much like virtual memory. Basically your objects that you will normally have in your, in your memory are actually just saved on the disk. So, um, you, you work with Realm pretty much like you're just working with your memory. Um, and so therefore you never have all data in there. Um, and it provides you a notification mechanism to like notify you when something changes. So these two aspects make actually using Realm really great when you write reactive apps, right? So you never have all data and you get a notification when there was something added to, to, to the storage. So you can react to changes and you always have a super fast access to the real time data. So it's really good. Um, it's a little bit difficult to explain. Uh, and, I'm, and as I said, I do it for the first time, so I might not be so awesome in it. So I'm gonna just give a super quick, uh, a super quick demo for 
what I mean. And so I'm just gonna have a super quick example. Oh, damn. Super quick example of, there you go. Super quick example of how the code looks like, and then we're gonna have a look at what reactive is there to, to do uh, with it. So um, this is, so this, this quick example is for the people that have never seen Realm, um, both on the Android and the iPhone. Um, so with Realm, you gotta define what kind of objects you're gonna store it in, and you don't have uh, some, some kind of software to design your schema, you just lay down your schema in code. So for example, I'm just gonna say class uh, message, let's say, I'm just, let's say that I'm storing some kind of messages in my realm, and then there's a, I don't know, there's a, a string field that I wanna have here that's called text. Okay, so here's my class. So this is gonna be the, the data models that I'm gonna be using in my application. And uh, to tell Realm that um, I'm gonna be storing those on, 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 the, on the disk, I need to subclass from object. So object is a class in Realm that is a base class for basically data objects. And now I have my schema uh, already done. So Realm, we just look for all classes that subclass from object and lay down the structure on a disk to store these um, in the Realm. All right, um, now let's see how do we get some from Realm. And this is already working, like this is a, this is a playground, so this is actually working right now. Uh, there's things happening and crazy stuff that you don't really see, but yeah, trust me. <laughs> so let's have a look at how do you do this. I'm gonna grab a Realm instance like this. All right, and then here it is. And this doesn't really do anything. It's just, it just pretty much tells Realm that I'm gonna use it from this thread. So this is, doesn't really create like some kind of crazy structure. <laughs> and I wanna see all the messages that are stored in the Realm. I'm gonna say messages equals Realm objects of type message. All right. And so it is, it is really easy now I have this one is just a collection of all the message objects that have been stored in the realm. Like, this is literally all the code. This is right now working. It gives me results of type message. Um, and I can sort those or uh, filter them and do crazy things like this. But the most important thing is that this doesn't really load anything from, from disk right now. It's just defined what kind of objects I'm interested in. So it's pretty much a declaration. I am going to be working with message objects, but that's it, I didn't really do anything. And so when you start accessing indexes or enumerating over messages, then the data is gonna be read from disk, which is really cool for things like table views because you have just four or five objects that you need at a time to be displayed on the screen. So you don't have to read all the other objects from disk. You can just use those right away. All right. so. Actually, let's have a look how many objects I fetched from disk, like so, zero. Well, yeah, I didn't really add any, so sure, zero. Uh, so let's just add one, like so, uh, realm right, and in the, in the closure that I put to right, I can create new objects and add them to the realm, just very easily, like so. And then what we want is a new message, like so. Actually, I can just make it a little bit nicer. Let hello, hello text is hello. Okay. So this is how I create an object. And now I can just say realm add. And actually now it's stored on disk. That's it. Like as soon as, as disclosure is done, then it's all stored on the disk. So it's pretty easy. And the thing, the thing is that I'm really excited about is uh, now once that this is finished, I can just say messages, which is my uh, query that queries all the, all the message objects. I'm gonna say messages count. And, I'll, and now it says one here. So it's the, same, like it's, the same, it's the same object. I didn't have to do a reload or refresh or anything like that. It just always just shows me what is actually stored in the realm. Um, 
which is pretty great. So you don't have to, uh, you know, constantly check for new data. You don't have to send messages via notification center. It just always just tells you what's there. And then it's really easy because once you, you define a like query like that, like messages, you can also add notifications to it. So I can say messages add notification block. And this one will give me, I'm going to ignore what, what it gives me right now, but um, I can do this here, whatever I want, print update UI. So maybe I can do a reload on my table view and stuff like that. And then so this block will just get called every time there is new data, not in the realm, not for that object, but for the specific objects that I'm looking for. So if I, if I hear I'm not interested in all the objects, but I'm interested in uh, the ones that have text empty, like so. Now messages will just look for all the messages that have text empty. And then this notification block will fire only then when there are changes to messages that have the text empty. So it will really send you a, a really focused notification, exactly the data you're looking for, there's new objects or deleted objects or so you can, you can uh, react to this. Um, <coughs> and so, yeah, and it's pretty easy uh, and writing actually reactive apps is really, really easy with that, uh, with that thing. So what we, what we saw was, yeah, you don't have to call reload. We don't, you don't have to uh, do much more than that. Okay. A few more slides and then I'll show like a proper app that will show you what you can do. All right. Um, so for this, for this talk, I prepared this little app that it's a, that it's a group chat and it has uh, messages coming in via JSON and they show up in this, uh, in the most left tab, all the messages and you can favorite some of them. Uh, and those that are favored that show in the middle tab and then there's a profile tab where you can see your photo and things like this. Um, and I'm going to use this app just in a little bit to show you like what kind of things um, you can do with Realm and Reactive. So let's have a look at how, how does it help you. Um, first, first thing on the uh, Reactive Manifesto was that your apps <coughs> needs to be responsive. And it's really easy with Realm because you can write and read from different threads with no problem. And you can never have a merge conflict or anything like this. So uh, yeah, you can keep your, your app responsive by doing all the heavy work on the background and of course keeping the, the UI responsive on the main thread. However, as I said, for table views, for example, where you need four or five objects at a time, you can actually do that on the main thread as well because it's really so fast to fetch one of those, which is what you need to do at a time, that you can actually also do it on the main thread um, if that's all you do on the main thread, of course. Um, but that really, it really helps that it's so fast. Um, and yeah, your app is responsive because you have notifications that are focused exactly on the data you're showing in a moment. So it's really easy to react to those. And your app is resilient in many different ways. And Realm ha helps with a couple of those. For example, everything is stored on the disk. Nothing is really staying only in memory. So as soon as the network is gone, yeah, whatever. Like everything is on the disk anyway. Um, or for example, as I said, writes can never fail because they're isolated and they always uh, get the latest copy of the data before the write starts and they happen serially. So if you write from one thread, your write block, uh, your write block basically will get a copy, a snapshot of the whole object tree, do the changes you want to do, commit this, and then this is the latest data. The next write that happens after that will have this latest version of the, of the tree and write to that tree. And so if by, for whatever reason your write fails, the snapshot that the write was working on is discarded and the next write will just uh, go on with the latest successful uh, write. So they happen serially and they can just never fail, which is great um, if, you wanna, if you wanna write solid applications. Um, and it helps you to have your app elastic because I've seen people copy their model from the disk into memory to just show a table view. Uh, apparently, people who use core data will use an NSFetch controller um, to do that. 
which is great. Uh, but uh, I've seen a lot of people just load data and then just put it into an array and then just take objects from there, which is great if you have 50 objects. But uh, if you have, say, 10,000 objects, oh, OK, maybe OK, but about 15, then you have a memory warning and you're dead. So uh, not to mention that it's really slow to read those from the disk and copy them. So uh, yeah, so Realm helps you not, like, not to have more data in, mem in memory than you actually need uh, at, at a given moment. And it's message driven. We saw there's notifications, really focused ones. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty good. So I have this demo, as I told you, that I want to show you. Hopefully, that will make sense. Um, there it is. Uh, OK, so let's run the app and see what I have right now. So as said, it's a, it's a group chat application that is um, too small. Just right. OK. So yeah, so there is a, so it's a group chat. And, uh, and messages actually come in the whole time uh, from the chat room. It's a, OK, it's a fake app. So it fakely fetches JSON from the network. And, um, and that is just random messages. But the idea is that uh, people are talking in the chat room. And messages just appear in the feed as they came in. So like now they're 17, now they're 18, and so forth and so forth. And you can just favorite some of those. So maybe this one is uh, something about a purple pig and a green donkey. That's pretty cool. So oh, no. OK, uh, wait. I found it. There it is. OK. <laughs> oh, bastards. All right. So yeah, so I have a few favorited. And the other ones are just garbage. So I'm not favoring them. So uh, what I'm going to do just right now is just to uh, make the favorites view controller work. So uh, here we're going to see um, only the favorites. All right. Um, let me head to the favorites view controller. And uh, here there is a. What I just said is very bad. Uh, to, I just have messages array uh, that will contain message um, objects. And I have the normal, like the standard table view code here. Uh, this one just says the title of the section. This one just tells how many rows. And this one just grabs, uh, grabs one object from the uh, messages array and then just configures a cell with it. And <coughs> And so if this was an array and I will just put in stuff in there, it will totally work uh, like that. But what I want to do is I want to have a reactive view control that works with Realm. So let me do that. Uh, OK, I'm going to use a, uh, a closure here. And so here, I'm going to say, OK, I want to fetch a Realm for myself. Yep. Uh, and this one control like fetching a rel control, but um, this is very rarely, for example, if you don't have the right password for an encrypted realm or things like that, then this will throw then at this point. Um, but we don't use an encrypted realm at all, so that's fine. So um, so yeah, so let me fetch the, uh, the, the messages, right? Here it is. Uh, just as before, just as I did before realm, objects, and now in, in here, I already defined a message object like this. Nice. And I can say filter and just take only the favorites. I need to consult my message class to see how the favorite field is called. There it is. It's just called favorite. OK. I will say I want all the messages where favorite is true. Good. And uh, I think that's about it. I'm just going to return it from here. And uh, God damn it, <laughs> I uh, need to specify a type. I will have results that will contain message. Yep. All right. Good. So far, so good. So I have this messages that contains results from Realm that are only favorite, and that's true. And actually, if you see, right now there is no warnings and there are no errors anymore. Because results also is a collection type. So you can just call count and you can just access uh, random <coughs> indexes by subscripting it. So you can just grab objects from there. 
And actually, this is all the work that I need to do, honestly. Okay, this was a setup. I mean, I've already <laughs> wrote the table, the table view methods, but this is actually everything that I have to do. Um, uh, here are my favorites. So if I switch here, then I can actually already see all the messages that I favorite from, from any other screen. So uh, this actually fetched all the messages from Realm where favorite is true. That's pretty good. So let's try something slightly different. Um, okay. So how about if I unfavorite all this? Yeah, this is not really changing anything. It's not really doing something. Something's wrong and so forth. So let me unfavorite them from here. All of them, like so. Mm -hmm. Then something is wrong. There are still favorites here. So the thing is that basically the problem is that the, the screen is not being updated, right? So the ones that, are, that showed up the first time, they're just still there. Uh, and and I, I know that I said that the results are always showing you the latest data. And it's true. But the problem is that UIKit does not know that we have new data. So the table view needs to reload every time that we have new data, even though the results themselves are showing you uh, what's live in there. So here we're going to use this add notification block that I showed you uh, earlier. So you need to create a property like so. I'm going to call um, subscription maybe. Yeah, subscription. OK. This will be of type notification token. OK. So when I add a block like this that will notify me anytime there is new data, I need to, uh, it gives me back a little token that I have to retain in my view controller so that it stays alive. Uh, and as soon as the view controller goes away, for example, it's being dismissed, it will dismiss also the value of the little token. And then this will tell Realm to stop uh, send notifications for this subscription. It's really handy. Um, OK, so I just defined it. And then I'll just do subscription equals. And now what do I do? God damn it, I can't see. Anything here? I can just do it. Everything in the in the closure up there. Although, oh, let's see it here. Okay, a notification block, like so. And then um, I'm still gonna ignore my parameters. No need for them, because everything I need to do in here is just say self table view reload data, like so. Because as soon as I call reload data, then table view will actually call these methods, and this will actually see the latest data. So as soon as it reloads, it will just use the what's, what's, now, what's now in the realm. So it's really, yeah, it's just defining a property to retain the token, and then just do that. Let's run, and let's have a look. OK, so now I have these three favorites here. Nice. Let me favorite maybe two more. Now I see five. So as soon as I favorite some in the other tab, this tab is getting notified that there are new ones. Uh, and it just shows the latest data. And even cooler, I can just unfavorite some of those. And as soon as I unfavorite some of those, the favorite property changes on those objects. And Realm tells me that I, need, that I have new uh, changes, basically. And uh, it calls reload data like so. So that's, uh, I mean. You're free to argue about it, but it's like this is really like very little code to write for, for, to make this to happen. Um, yeah. All right. So, so we saw like it's really super easy to like make a table view work and also like to have live results. And the thing is uh, that right now you can you can you know favorite or unfavorite an object from any thread. And that wouldn't really matter because uh, the notification about this change will be delivered on the thread you have in your favorites controller. And then you can just work with the table view uh, right away. As you can see, actually, I never did any uh, like Grand Central Dispatch or any threading at all for this thing, right? So this thing is actually working on the main thread. But as I said, you just need few objects at a time to be actually available to the table view to show these rows that are actually right now on screen. And reading two, three objects 
is very, very fast with Realm. And you're probably going to ask, how come it's so very fast? How fast is it? Well, I don't want to get into details because I said I can talk about this for a really long time. But uh, just to make a comparison, for example, what Core Data does is that it uses SQLite in, like, for storage. Core Data is just an ORM that is built on top of SQLite. And so what it does is when you say, I want all objects of type whatever, it will, Core Data will sit down and like build a build an SQL query about it. It will say, okay, so this means that you mean that I, that I need to do a select from this table, join this other table and join this third table and select these properties from there. And we'll say this to SQLite, SQLite will return um, basically plain values uh, from C. And then Coordinata will say, okay, so in the model they have I don't know, an NS date or something like that. So I'm going to take this int value from SQLite, convert it to an NS date, and create an object that has this value in it. So it does all of this like heavy work in between. <coughs> um, while Realm is really about taking an object from memory, just dumping the bytes down the disk, that's it. Okay, mingle a little bit with pointers, but it's just very little work compared to what, what an ORM has to do. All right, cool. So that was pretty easy. And this really allows me, for example, to do, you know, one view controller work on one thing, another view controller work on another thing, uh, a, a network controller to merge JSON uh, on a background thread, while all of these are working on the main thread and refreshing the screens. Um, so this really helps you to, uh, to implement. If I need to, if I need to just condense what I, what I mean with this example is that it's a really reactive example, but you don't have to use a reactive framework for it. So you don't have to architecture your app in a certain way just so that you can be reactive, if that makes sense. Um, all right, and so to wrap up with what I had in mind to show, I'm going to just show one more example. Um, do I still have a lot of time or is it like few minutes or nobody cares how do you guys feel <laughs> okay so so <clears throat> what I have in mind to show you uh, just to just to look into more interesting stuff is uh, as I said there there can be many things that work from different threads all with the same realm and all being uh, pretty much working with with the live data in it so as you noticed uh, in my little app here, so there's names and then these names say something and um, actually there's an empty spot in here. Um, if you watch this on a retina display like I do, there's a little uh, silver rectangle. Here I think it's just an empty spot. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so there's supposed to be images in there. But right now I have a, I have a data controller class that takes care of importing JSON and creating all the, all the objects from JSON and then uh, saving them into Realm. But uh, since I really want to separate working with JSON from downloading images, I don't do that in my data controller. So I will have a different class called cache controller that will take care of downloading assets, basically. A um, couple of reasons. Uh, well, I don't want my data controller to know about my cache controller because I might want to replace my cache controller with something else. Um, or, different reason, uh, an example that I thought about on the flight today and I thought was really good is that maybe, maybe my app does not want to always have a cache controller. So, for example, if I'm on GPRS, say that I'm in the subway in the city that doesn't have good data uh, network in the subway, uh, I don't want the, the app to just start try downloading images because it doesn't make sense. It won't download them anyways. Um, so when the connectivity changes, maybe I want to kill the cache controller and then just recreate it one, once I'm on Wi-Fi or 4G. Uh, so that really makes sense to have those two separate and not knowing actually about each other. So what I have in mind for my uh, group chat app is for the data controller to process all my JSON and create all my objects 
which are message and photo and store those in my realm. So the message is basically the text and the timestamp and all these kind of things. Um, and the photo objects are having two properties. One is URL, which is the URL where the image resides. And one is uh, an NS data field where I would store the actual data of the photo, the actual bytes. But since the actual bytes of the images don't come with the JSON, uh, data controller just creates empty, okay, it just creates photo objects with the image field being empty. Actually, I can just <coughs> open, I would like to open the, the realm that my app has, so you can actually have a see uh, at the, the realm structure itself. Oh, there it is, okay. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, okay, there's probably no way to increase the phone right now for this, but uh, so here are all the messages that are stored from my app. And uh, here are the photos. And you can see that, <laughs> maybe you can see, okay, you, you would see if you have really good eyesight, that here there's a column called URL, and here are all the URLs of the images that those messages use. And there's another column called image, where, which is basically empty. Uh, so there's a bunch of photo objects with their image property empty. So there are a bunch of photos with their image property empty. Okay, and this is the key in here. <laughs> because what I want to do is um, have data controller do what it does and then cache controller actually just have a results that uh, is observing all the photo objects that have their image empty. So anytime somebody, maybe data controller, maybe somebody else, so anytime that somebody creates a photo object with the image property empty, cache control will get a notification and actually go download it and add it to the database. So these two will actually work totally separate. Um, so let's, let's, let's see how, how this could be. Um, I know that this is the, um, basically the most difficult thing that one could do, especially in live coding, writing a cache. So, <laughs> Um, so you're going to try it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm going to do this on one condition, okay? This is a naive implementation of cache, just to show the purpose that, you know, the two classes are working totally separate and then they're n basically coordinating everything through the realm. Okay, so <coughs> let's do. Uh, <laughs> so. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna need notifications, right? So uh, the first thing I'm gonna add is a notification uh, token. So we call it subscription. I like to call them subscriptions. They're basically, you know, you subscribe for changes of your data. So I like subscription. You can call them whatever you want. And this will be of type notification token, like so. Good. And so my cache controller will. Use realm, okay, good. And then what will happen? Then um, I need all the photo objects that have the image nil. So, hmm, okay. Um, okay, let's do that. Realm object of type photo. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly peek at the, uh, at the photo object. Here it is, it has a URL, which is a string, and an image, which is an NS data optional. All right, and the primary key is URL. Good, so now I have them, but I want only the ones where image is nil. Okay, image equals nil. Good, so now I have them. Nice. However, I don't really need the objects themselves, I just wanna get notified when they're new ones. All right, so I'm going to do add notification to block in, block, sorry, block in. And, um, and do that. So the first parameter is the result itself. So um, actually a reference to, to the results themselves and a possible error. Okay, good. Um, and I want to store this in my subscription. I think so far I'm good. Okay, so anytime there is a new image or there's one less, uh, I will get notified that it has been changes uh, in that certain 
subset of the data that I'm interested in. So here I'm going to do, probably I'm going to download the image, but I can't do this on the main thread, that's for sure. Uh, so I need to switch to a background thread and then um, do that there. So dispatch async. Yep. Um, dispatch get global queue. Check. Um, does anyone know the constant for like a default thread? QOS. This one? Yep. Are you guys totally sure about that? <laughs> QoS. I've never seen this before in my life. All right. So I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, yeah. Let's actually let's give it a try. That's true. Let's give it a try. Okay. Zero flags. A block. All right. Good. Uh, and so, <laughs> and so this block is going to call, call, be called every time there is a change in this data set that I'm interested in. So I'm just going to go with a print here first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe just to make the point, I'm just going to say if ns thread, current thread, is main thread, <laughs> say print, okay, print main, uh, bluff called, okay, background. Well, let's run it and see what's going to happen. So uh, my network control is going to create one of those, uh, basically a copy of, oh, crazy, there it is, background. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. All right. Uh, whoever, whoever proposed that, um, you, good job. <laughs> okay, so, so what I want to do is from my background thread is just to, um, let's see. What I'm going to do for my background thread? Um, well, mm, well, I need the URL, so basically I'm going to try to get the URL of the image. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, fetch a different realm because now I'm on a different thread. It's, that's the thing, you cannot really reuse the realms from different threads. And you can't really reuse the objects from different threads. You can read and write, but you have to isolate the objects themselves in different threads. And this is something that engineers are actually working on. So this might also change in the future, but I don't, I don't dare promise that. Um, but so yeah, but it's, but it's exactly the same procedure. Uh, get a realm and then just query with it. So I'm just saying if photo URL uh, realm object for primary type photo itself and the key is um, no I'm just trying to fetch the first one that is there I'm sorry for this photo photo first um, URL okay so what I want to do here is just fetch the photo objects and then take the first one if there is a first one um, Actually, I want the ones that have image no, like so. Okay, now I'm good. Does your result have that information? Um, probably already there, although I can't really use it on a different thread because I just I switch here. Uh, okay. Okay. So this one will be called on the main so one. Okay. Switch, and then here you need to uh, fetch it again. Yeah. I mean, I can just, I can just, yeah. Is there a way to actually get if I have a, like for data if I have an object on one let's say context yeah and I can fetch like a copy of this on a other context using this yeah, object ID yeah yeah is there something like that that yeah let me do that this is nicer um, actually so with the two ideas put together <laughs> <laughs> let me fetch the URL on the main thread and then just reuse it like on the background thread so I'm gonna say um, exactly actually the same here uh, so if let photo URL, so I'm going to fetch the URL, which is the key for this object on the main thread. So from my results that I actually already have there, uh, first uh, URL. Okay. 
Um, actually, I'm going to do this with the guard. Nice. Okay, return. So, and this is just a string, so there's not really any problem there. What's the problem there? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, so this is just a string, so I can use it across threads. Mm -hmm. No problem here, so I can just uh, get rid of this one. And here, just say, um, what can I say? Self download photos with the with this URL. Yeah. Whew, okay. And and this is fine. So if you fe if you fetch like a string, a number, whatever, you can switch cross threads. Do this. And here, what I'm going to do here is, um, well, I'm going to download the photo. But since all the photos are actually pre-included with my project, I'm just going to load it. So I'm going to say image, <laughs> you are image, your named URL. Okay. And uh, I can also force and wrap this one. So good. And then what do I need to do? Just I have the image just stored into Realm. Now, which Realm? Is it the main thread Realm? Is it the background thread Realm? It doesn't really matter, really. It really does not matter. <laughs> so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna try like do this all over again. Here it is. Now I don't even need to know which thread I'm here because I just say I want Realm on this thread and then the library just does that. Okay, uh, a write transaction. We open it, we close it. Uh, and, and so what I wanna do is find the photo I was looking for um, by saying here realm object and this is uh, what a gentleman from first row asked for there's an object for primary key which is basically one to one so uh, there's no searching there's no filtering there's no sorting it just goes and grabs the one with this ID uh, so I'm gonna say photo self and the key is just the URL here there it is Tac. okay um, I'm going to bind this like so. Um, <sighs> whatever. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to say, okay, um, here's my photo object and here's my image property. And I'm going to set it to, how was this one now? UI PNG something. There it is. Okay. So this grabs the NS data out of my image, basically extracts it by force. Um, and this is actually everything that I need to do. I don't really need to call save or anything like that because as soon as my RAM block finishes, then it just uh, does a two factor um, authentication that the, the, the save was successful and then moves basically the pointer that says, this is the real three to the new one and then the old one will be discarded uh, later on. So all other threads will see the, the, the latest data as soon as this block ends. Whew, okay. So now we have this cache written, um, which basically, as said, observes for photos that have not been downloaded and in change, anything changes. So there might be new objects, there might be old objects, doesn't really matter. Anything that changes about this will trigger a notification block. And then in my notification block, I will check uh, if there's at least one that is like that. And um, then I will call on the background thread this one. And this will then download the image and save it uh, in the realm. And then this save will actually re-trigger the notification that we have above. So as soon as I change the image property on one of the photos, then uh, this one will trigger it again. And it will look for them if there is, again, if there is one that the, has the image nil. And then if there is five, Im five images missing, it will just go on and download them all. And if not, it will just return. Um, okay. And that's my cache, actually. We can have a look. It must work right now. Uh, if, if we run the app and the images are there, then it, then it worked. Uh, and they're there. There it is. So what it did was as soon as the cache control was created, it saw that there are missing images and one by one just triggers this, this download method and that's it. Um, and that's what I wanted to show you. That this is, this is really, this is what I wanted to show that you can have completely separated 
uh, classes that are working via messages that are being handled by Realm um, in the storage. So separate classes can work with it, can write, read, whatever, and then, but still, you don't have to model your ar like app architecture after this, because as you said, it's just, as you saw, it's just like working with, with correction, sorry, collections. <laughs> um, okay, so what did I have here? Dispatch queue priority default. That is interesting. That's kind of the old name. For That's all names yeah? yeah? Crazy. I have it to did check this. They changed some internals actually, but it's kind of the new name. Yeah. But it's anyway, it's just a constant. It's a name constant yeah, anyway. So, yeah. okay. Oh, well, I also learned something today, which is great. Um, okay. Thank you. That was everything that I had prepared for you. So, if you have questions now that you want to discuss in front of everyone, ask me now. If you have any feedback that you want to discuss privately, then later on over a beer. Um, and it's my email if you want to know more in my Twitter. Um, okay, so does anyone feel like asking a question right now? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> in the latest example uh, that you showed, the image appears on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain what's really uh, going on under the hood? Yeah, I mean, sure. Are we observing the message objects and get the notification <laughs> one once the like a child object photo gets updated? Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Let me show you the code. Okay. I I tried to just have few examples extracted out of the app that we can look at because the whole app is longer than my talk to uh, produce, but um, okay. that's a valid question, definitely. Let's have a look. So, so here is my table cell view class. So this is basically the cell view that shows one message. And what I have here is a notification token, surprise. And um, <coughs> so here's my config with message. So, um, my table view delegate method calls this one and passes in the message. And what I do in here is call set image with message. And then this one is just here uh, below, which what it does is, uh, okay, uh, let me show you the message class first. So there, so there is a property called photos, which is a list of photos. So there might be more photos, you know, one of the user that posted it uh, or maybe attached photo and things like this. And so each message can have more than one, but uh, it's, a, it's a list called photos. Okay, so what I, what I check here is, is there one? Is there one photo attached to the, to the message? And is its image uh, property containing data? And if so, then I just um, show the image in the cell and that's it. Everything ends there. However, if there isn't, now it's more interesting. Uh, there's a notification block here that just observes photos. So anytime there is a, a, any of the photos attached to this message changes, this notification block will get called. Uh, and so as soon as the cache message changes the image property, so adds the data, the cell itself will get a notification that one of the photos attached to this message is changed. And then what I do here is just, um, call set image with message and that's it. So that's, and, and this is, this must be some kind of old code that I have. You don't really need to even switch threads here. Uh, there it is. This should be okay. There it is, self. So, so, so that's it. So basically if the image pops up on screen and uh, I'm sorry, if the cell pops up on screen, so the user is scrolling or anything um, and the image is already in the realm it will just show the image and that's it. And if it's not, then it will observe for changes. And as soon as the cache controller writes to the realm, it will get a notification. And then uh, you can just, yeah, update the image view. So they really, they all just work separately and everything goes through, through the realm. I'm um, sorry, did this answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, so do you always have to assign this ad notification block call to that a token or you're doing it in purpose of some disposal? Yeah, this is, this is the way to dispose of it. So as soon as something retains the token, you get notifications. 
Uh, so if you don't retain the token, you will not get notifications. But it's, I, I find it pretty handy because I often find it that I want to receive notification as long as the view controller is presented on screen. Um, and this is a little bit different than what I've done so far. Just let me quickly. So what we did here in the favorites view control was to create a, create a message and then subscribe for notifications and view the load. So um, you will get notifications until you dismiss the view controller. Then the dismissing the view controller will release it and then it will release the, the token and then the notifications will stop. But uh, sometimes you want to, to optimize a little bit probably. So you can, sorry, you can uh, move this into view will appear like so. So you will subscribe for notifications on this result set only when the view control is actually on screen. Uh, and then in this case, you will have to do, because you're not really releasing it, right? So in view will disappear, you will do subscription uh, stop. Okay. And so calling stop on subscription will stop the notifications and will actually also release it. Um, okay, I'm sorry about this. I'm not so sure if it's going to release the value itself. Um, calling stop will probably just stop the notifications. And so, and so like this, you will get notified only when the user is actually looking at the screen. As long as it goes away, notifications will stop. Um, and you might want to do that, I guess, that if you have many, 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 many notifications, many results, it could probably cost you some performance. I don't know. I still didn't really experience uh, any problem with that. I'm just making sure that I'm not like <laughs> over promising here. <laughs> okay. Um, that answer your questions. Yes. yes. All right. Um, and so for the few developers that are Android guys, um, the API looks very, very similar on Android. Um, of course, there's different syntax sometimes with Java, but um, it actually works uh, works exactly, the, mostly the same way. Uh, and we are working really hard towards actually making them, you know, exactly the same. Uh, so what you saw here, I'm sure you can apply it in your Android everyday um, struggles with whatever Google gives you. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. All right. Any more questions right now? Yeah. Uh, in the cache class. Yeah. Can you switch? I totally can. Here it is. Uh, on the last line, you said that the notification will be fired when the block ends. So it's not if you copy photo dot image equals five times. Yeah. That would not fire five different notifications. Yeah. Um, well. Yes. So. I can answer this question really easily. So, um, okay. So here, this is the realm. So these are, are your objects, right? And uh, everyone's reading from there, and everything's great. But as soon as as soon as uh, a write transaction starts, so as soon as this code starts uh, to execute, realm will get this one and clone it into this one, <laughs> right? And so. And so you have, you have two object trees. Mm -hmm. And then here you write and you do changes and you work only on this one. So it's not like KVO or something? No, 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 no. It's, it's, more, it's more like Git, basically. You, have, you, you pull everything away, you work on it, and then you merge it back. But because writes are serial, you don't have much conflicts like you have with Git. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, this is, so this is how the process ends. So you update values on this one, and uh, everyone else that is reading in this, in this point is reading from this one. So they read the good data. If you screw up something here, they will still have the good data. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, and then so at, at, as soon as the write transaction ends, uh, Realm does a set two-factor check on whether this data is still good. And if so, then, okay. Yeah, so, so let's say that the, <laughs> that, the realm that the realm that everyone reads from has the beer. <laughs> so everyone reads from the realm with the beer. And then as soon as the check is done, Realm just moves the beer to the, to the new realm. Mm -hmm. And then everyone that reads at this point will read from here. And this one will get discarded after a while. Does it, does it uh, 
wait till all re reads are done before it does that move the barrel? Uh, this I don't know. Um, you got me there. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, this is something that the core guys do on the core team. Uh, so I wouldn't really know everything about yeah, that. Actually, um, I, I bet any, any reads that were in progress would still, still go there, but any new reads would go there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So as, as soon as the beer is here, everyone will read from here. So I would guess that if there were some going on, they finish up that yeah, way. although I said it's really fast. I don't know what, like, yeah. there could be, yeah, if there's m m billions of objects for sure, there can be longer operations. Um, okay, yeah. So that's that's pretty much it. Okay. There we have this. Is there anything else I can probably answer? Oh, okay. I'm there's sorry. There was there was just somebody. Yeah. yeah there's there's Objective C, Swift, uh, Java, and React Native. Yes. And coming from the uh, R X Swift side a little bit, there's a number of operators to. Well, merge, join, concat, and so on. Do some operations on either views, like those streams of notifications, like, or or just uh, throttle them and so on. So here you do have this notification part, but yeah. do you have this part when you can make few result of several objects and then maybe merge them somehow together, get notifications whether any of them is uh, uh, changing and so on. Okay. Um. I think this is something that you can't do. You can't have, you cannot observe five of all the objects that have image nil. Um, what you can do with filter is, is pretty powerful because it basically takes an NS predicate. So anything you can do with NS predicate, you can do, you can do, use for filter, filtering objects. And we also support subqueries in the, in the filter. So it's pretty powerful. Um, there might be a possibility that you can do that, but that I just don't know of because it's some crazy NS predicate um, thing that I haven't done before. Uh, but I think no. However, um, integrating Realm with Rx is really a breeze because as you can see, there's notifications and they also have a reference to the latest data. So it's really easy to wrap this uh, into an observable, um, which I'm vigorously working on right now uh, for on RX Swift community to have a proper extension uh, for that. Was that what you were? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, great. Uh, you were asking. No, I was just asking. Ah, okay. Objective -C. All right. Yeah, Objective-C is, uh, it, it all started with Objective-C. This is a product that is now in its fifth year. So uh, it started in Objective-C. Uh, and uh, and Swift tag along so, somehow uh, and yeah.